One would be very hard pressed to say that the German pre-war and wartime construction projects were not extremely impressive. Both the stadiums, the government buildings, and certainly the forts for defense or protection, such as the U-boat pens and the giant flag towers. The German flag towers consisted of eight complexes of large above-ground structures with anti-aircraft guns, searchlight platforms on top. The largest blockhouse towers were constructed with three in Berlin, two in Hamburg, and three in Vienna. Construction began from 1940 and onwards. Other cities that used smaller single-purpose flag towers included Stuttgart and Frankfurt. Some of these were built in key outlying German strong points and cities as well. Hitler personally sketched out some of the towers and they were built in only six months, with walls as thick as 3.5 meters. There were three different evolutions of generations of the flat towers. The largest flat tower complex was self-sustaining, with its own water reservoir, food supplies, and a small hospital wards. One had a hospital bed capacity of 95, with two operation rooms. They were always fully stocked with ammunition as well. Each tower provided shelter for up to 10,000 civilians during bombing raids. And when the Russians entered the city of Berlin, they sheltered up to 30,000 civilians and could not be destroyed, even by direct fire of the heaviest Russian guns. These were the last places to surrender and only after supplies ran out. The towers also had a radar dish which could be retracted for protection and it was armed with guns of several calibers from 2 cm up to 128 mm Flak 40. And the towers could sustain a rate of fire of 8,000 rounds a minute in a 360 degree field of fire. Allied planes avoided the towers when possible, but bombing runs were made against them. Some took direct bomb hits, but no major damage was ever done. The towers are credited with preventing the firestorms that engulfed other German cities, since the bombers could not form up into the necessary firestorm configuration under the intense anti-aircraft fire from the flak towers. See, there's, there's a couple of people there. See those little white dots? Those are people. Yeah, that sort of gives you an idea. This is indescribably large, and there's some battle damage on it up top. A lot of attempts were made to destroy these. The Russians used them for target practice. And after the war, everybody tried to blow them up. Except how do you blow up something this big? You don't. Here's one of the other flat towers in the part of Vienna. And it's smaller than the first one. And we can sort of count the stories here. Now these three towers in Vienna are not quite as big as the ones in Berlin and Hamburg, but they are extremely impressive to look at, especially when you stand at the base and you consider they are full of rooms and stairs and somewhere deep deep in the back of my mind I am a little happy and appreciative that they actually locked up all the entrances because I would feel forced to walk all the way up to the top in all of the ones I could enter but looking at them I do find it very optimistic on the part of any gunner in the wars that was firing any projectiles at these, whether it be a Russian tank or heavy artillery piece, 
What damage could he possibly think, with optimistic thinking, of doing here? When I said they break it up, they literally break it up. It'd be an enormous museum here for people who are very much into health and fitness. It truly is impressive. How the hell they built this thing? The scaffolding alone. After the war, there was some attempt at destroying the towers, but it proved impossible, too costly or simply too dangerous. So they remained, partly covered up in Berlin, and the ones up in Vienna have been locked up for access and now remains as reminders of the war surrounded by beautiful old Viennese buildings. At the time of my visit, the one in Hamburg was closed off and being refitted for a large garden complex and it's also used for apartments. Some of them are used for business space and one has an aquarium on top. However, I do very much look forward to my visit and my tour inside the one in Berlin. I hope you enjoy history and military history as much as I love bringing it to you. And if you want to see more of the photos and documents I've used for these episodes, documentation and so on, you can go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out traveling around the world to some of these far-flung locations like Van Allen Brown's first test stand behind me or Deepness nuclear reactor down there or the Magital Line over there, you can donate on PayPal. Uh, protection at serviceint.com. It'll be right here and it is also on lostbattlefields.com. You absolutely don't have to, but I appreciate any help and I love all you guys for all the support you've shown me because history is important. We all know that and I'm going to bring it to you.